Bale free to go, Sane to Bayern is still on, European football has an end date, a transfer roundup and today's great debate all coming up in the next few minutes as I'm your host Matt Fronick. You are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. First off, and despite the fact that the season is on hold, Real Madrid are still making plans for the next season. Plans which do not involve Gareth Bale. Now, of course, this transfer rumour of him leaving Los Blancos has literally been going on for the last few years, but it seems that finally, finally, the board have come to the end of their tether and they want to be rid of the Welshman. And it's kind of easy to see why. Since Cristiano Ronaldo left in 2018, they probably would have hoped that the now 30-year-old was going to step up, fill the boots of Ronaldo and show exactly why he is their most expensive signing of all time. However, that definitely hasn't happened. Even last summer, he was going to leave on a free before Florentino Perez actually wanted the transfer fee before he moved to China. Zindi Zidane welcomed him back into the squad, gave him another chance and he's repaid him with pretty much nothing. He hasn't got a league goal since September and has only played three games this calendar year. Bale is just not doing enough to demand that ridiculous wage that he is on, which at a base salary is 17 million euros per year. Obviously, Real Madrid aren't happy about this and they're going to sacrifice it by finally letting him go on a free. As I mentioned, not only does it free up 17 million euros per year worth of salary, but also now that Britain have left the EU, it means that any player from Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland or England counts as a non-EU player. Now, obviously, this isn't such a big thing as there aren't too many of them abroad in mainland Europe. But with Gareth Bale, he will count as a non-EU player. And if Real Madrid are planning to bring in the next Brazilian superstar or wherever they're from, then, well, they're probably going to need a spot free rather than being taken up by someone who'd rather be on the golf course. But moving on to our next story, and it comes once again, talking of long-running transfer sagas from Bayern Munich and their pursuit of Leroy Sane. Now, according to reports, Hassan Salahamzic, the Bayern Munich sporting director, met with Leroy Sane's agent last week to still discuss a move. Now, there is rumours that Hansi Flick is actually preferring the signing of Timo Werner ahead of Sane, but I guess a Bayern Munich, whatever the board say, goes. Anyway, for Manchester City, and we spoke about this briefly yesterday, this will be a major, major loss, but technically does get them in the good books of the financial fair play at the moment. Now, we all know that Manchester City are facing a two-year European ban because of financial fair play discrepancies, but we also spoke yesterday about how Riyad Mahrez could potentially move into PSG. And I also mentioned yesterday that surely they're not going to sell the likes of Mahrez and Sane in the same summer. So if they had to let one of them go, it'd probably be Sane, only because he's going to fetch in more money, even if it isn't that much more. Apparently, City have put an £80 million tag on Riyad Mahrez, where in the last few transfers, on Windows, Bayern and City have both said that over £100 million is going to be the figure should Leroy Sane transfer back to the Bundesliga. Of course, he signed for City from Schalke for £50 million, so they'll be making a hell of a lot of profit on him within the next few seasons. But all of this really is going to be thrown up into the air because we have no idea when the next season is going to start again. But apparently, we do know when it's going to end. So if you missed the major news yesterday and the live reaction that we did to it on One Football yesterday, Euro 2020 has been postponed pushback to Euro 2021. Now, the other item on the agenda of the meeting from UEFA yesterday was what to do with the Europa League and the Champions League. Now, apparently, they've initially set dates for the end of June and the Football Leagues, which is a representative that stays in touch with UEFA and all of the domestic football leagues in Europe, have also said that they're expecting an end date to be at the end of June latest. This seems to be very, very close, basically, to now. If everyone in Europe is going to be quarantined or there's going to be more and more cases of the coronavirus in the next few weeks and months, I highly doubt we'll have the worst of the virus, get rid of it, get the season back together, get the players playing, and then conclude the rest of the season and the Europa League and the Champions League all by the end of June. That's literally like three and a half months. It's about 14 to 15 weeks. Seems like a very, very hopeful estimate of when the league season will be done. Because if it is done, yeah, two months, summer transfer window, a little bit more time off. We probably have the season back and running by mid-September, which to me just seems super, super quick. Obviously, I'd be glad if it did happen, but we definitely, definitely need to wait and see how things unfold. Anyway, the other thing that was mentioned along with the domestic leagues finishing by the end of June is that the Europa League and the Champions League, an idea that was put forward, would be a one-game knockout tournament. Basically, they'd have the second leg of the first knockout round that are still to play, like City Madrid, Juve, Lyon, uh, Barca, Napoli and Bayern Chelsea. 
even though Bayern Chelsea is pretty much a given right now. And then from the quarterfinal stage, the semi-final stage, the final, it would just be one game for each and it would be played within a small amount of time, all in the host city of the final in Istanbul. The same thing goes to the Europa League in Gdansk in Poland. Whether or not this is actually a good idea, especially as we're supposed to be completing a domestic season as well, I have no idea. But as I said, we'll keep you guys updated and you can still stay updated as well on the OneFootball app too. So next up in a quick roundup of the rest of the day's transfer news where Birmingham wonder kid Jude Bellingham has apparently rejected the chance to join Bayern Munich because he really wants to move to Borussia Dortmund. Manchester United have triggered a contract extension into Manja Matic's contract, meaning he'll be at Old Trafford for another year. Mikel Arteta wants to sell Henrik Mkhitaryan and Roma are actually really keen to make the loan move a permanent one. And lastly but not least, Kieran Trippier has said that he'd love to end his career at Burnley under Sean Dyche. So, lastly but not least, we come to this week's great debate. This is when our One Football Newsroom pose a question to you guys and want to know your answers. Of course, you can find all of our answers in the relevant article within One Football app. But for the comments section, we want to know. What would you do with the rest of the footballing season? Now, in my opinion, I know we spoke about it a little bit earlier in the daily news, but I think, wait, I just think we've got to wait until we can get the fans back, the stadiums pumping, the atmosphere, and turn it back into the fully functioning sport that we all love, not some half-assed quick fix. There really should be no rush in terms of TV, sponsorship, advertising, all that kind of stuff. But... Having said that, they also shouldn't be cancelling the league. Now, I spoke about it on Monday's TFW, but that really brings the whole sport into disrepute because there's so much to be sorted and so much on the line. As we mentioned, we definitely, definitely should get our priorities as a society straight first before then rushing to bring back football. Also, if you rush them to play through some sort of cramp schedule in the summer months after so many months off, that's also going to do the players harm in the future as well. So there you have it. There's my thoughts on the great debate. Let me know yours in the comments section below and your thoughts on the rest of today's daily news. Whilst you're at it, you can smash the like button, click here or here to check out all of the other videos we've got going on on OneFootball. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.